Her family must be embarrassed. Imagine choosing to strip on a dirty website than act in a long-term job. Blimey, she must be really hard up for money. Desperate. The fact that I had been sexualized and been made an object of sexualization for my entire adult life, to then be told that I couldn't do it on my own terms was really, that's the bit that stung. So it was 96 and back then it wasn't very easy to get into the industry, onto TV, onto anything like that. Um, so to land a role like that, to suddenly go from school, essentially, because I was only 14, into a show which was so well known. I mean, I remember walking home from school and seeing like the billboards on the bus stops and then suddenly, you know, a week later going, oh my gosh, I'm going to be in that show. Like, how has this happened? So it was... It was exciting, it was mind-blowing, it was sort of overwhelming, um, and it was, it was a dream, really, because, again, like, at that time, something like that didn't happen to someone like me from a little town, you know. And you had some quite, like, you had some really hard storylines for one so young. How did that affect you? The storylines to begin with, because I was very young again, and I went in and there was a lot of pressure, I think. Um, in a way, I was really grateful that they'd given me and they trusted me with such a big storyline. What sort of played on my mind more, and again, as the years went through, was the way that you were almost pitted against each other. That was, that was the bigger thing. I think more than pressures on yourself, it was, there was this whole pool of beautiful people in, in one place and a sort of, it was almost like a competition for who's going to do the next magazine shoot or who's going to be in these big episodes that we've got coming up. It's like a popularity contest, I'd say. So that must have created quite a kind of nasty atmosphere in a way. And, and did you trust people around you? Can you tell me? Did you trust the other girls? Luckily, I had a really close-knit group of friends that I'm still friends with today. So I feel like that sort of saved me. Um, there was cattiness, you know, there was bitchiness. I think there is in any job. Unfortunately, as women, we sort of are pitted against each other and we are told that there's not space for everyone when there actually really is. And I think that's something that I try and um, champion now is women supporting women and women encouraging women because why would we push each other out when we can all be helping each other and, you know, giving each other a step up? But very much at that time, it wasn't about that, it was about, right, okay. I, think, I don't think shooting the calendars helped and that came a little bit later on because it was very much then a, right, well, you know, you're gonna be on the cover and that became a really big thing that, or you, if you didn't make the cover of the calendar, then something's wrong with you or you, you know, you're not good enough or, and I think that did play to a lot of the other girls and, and that did play, it didn't, unintentionally between us I guess there probably was a bit of tension of who is going to do this shoot or who's going to get that episode or you know like I say I think we were pitted against each other and there wasn't actually that between the girls so much it was more sort of pushed on us. It came from above did yeah. you um how old were you when you started to get asked to do the lads magazines and the calendars and stuff? I think I did the first one when I just turned 18, my first lads mag, I think it was FHM or something like that. Um, and then it sort of, you know, from then on, it was more of a consistent thing. We did them quite a lot. Um, you know, and I, lo I actually loved doing those shoots. Before I got into acting when I was young, my dream job was to be a model, like that's what I wanted to do. And as a, a naive 12 year old, I thought, oh, I'll just go to London when I'm 16 and I'll be in all the magazines. And, and so actually when I got to do these photo shoots and I got to go to amazing locations, like I went and shot one in the Bahamas once and that was just unreal. You were made to look amazing, but then <laughs> that came with like airbrushing and all the stuff that came in the 90s where actually I look back at those pictures now and go, that, I never looked like that. Did that make you feel more pressured, do you think? Because you were like, well, this is how I look in the magazines and now I'm having to meet people unairbrushed. I remember seeing one picture of myself. And in fact, it was that shoot that I did in the Bahamas. And I don't have very big boobs. And I remember seeing this photo shoot and my boobs had been made bigger and pointy. And I was like, I remember <laughs> looking at this picture and going, that, I, that's not me. 
<laughs> but having no say, no control over it, no control over the um, content of the interview, so no, just just no hold on that at all. It was all taken out of our hands. We were sort of being used as um, currency for the show, I guess. We were being used to promote the show, being used to promote calendars, being used to give this impression of what the show was about, but with nothing sort of in return, apart from obviously, like I say, you know, the nice location and things like that. But actually looking back, I wish I had been stronger and in a better position to go, actually, I'm not okay with this, or to have proof of that fi uh, finished image. Um, and do you mind me asking, did you get paid for extra for the... No. <laughs> I remember, so for the calendar in particular, I think some of the magazine shoots we got something, but often we didn't. Like the, the sort of buy-in was the, you're, we're taking you here. You know, we're going to this location. That was your payment. Or it was the, look, you're going to be on the cover. So that was, a, oh, well, I better not say no, because if I say no, then they'll give it to that person. Like you were made to feel like replaceable in that sense that you're like indispensable yes yeah, just... completely and i think it's very much like that in the acting industry isn't it you know you get if you don't take that role there's a million other people that will want it so i think that in itself makes you sort of on edge to go well i i can't say no i'd be stupid to say no and you've got people looking at you going well, why, why would you turn that down? Like, you're an idiot if you turn that down, because what an amazing opportunity. And some of these things were amazing opportunities, but at the same time, that's not to say you shouldn't be, you know, pay for that, or you shouldn't yes. have some sort of control over that, when it, it's basically you, your image, your words that are going out, and they're being completely contorted. Yeah. It, you know, your image and your words, they're yeah. being taken yeah. out of context, and you're made to look like actually you don't look in real life. And then that in itself has that knock-on effect of putting pressure on, on other people, you know, the people picking up those magazines going, oh, like you said, <laughs> oh my God, they look perfect. We, we didn't, we were, you know, young girls, we looked how we looked. And were you ever asked to do anything either on the show or in the magazine shoots that you were a bit uncomfortable with, that you are a bit like, that's a bit weird? I think with that, I remember it was usually the Lads Max interviews that I was most uncomfortable in because essentially what they wanted you to say was something sexual that they could put in print and put in, you know, the highlighted section of, of the interview. And I remember one, I think it was the first one they'd done and I was 18 and I got asked, I had a boyfriend at the time and they were asking really prying questions about me and my boyfriend and I was so young, you know, and really aware that obviously like my parents would be reading this magazine and and they prodded and prodded and prodded to the point where I, I think I ended up saying something because I thought well they, they're looking for something so I I said something and then the next minute that went to print it wasn't anything really bad but it was embarrassing for me that I had felt like I had to say something and again at this point in life you know you go <laughs> that's too much I'm not going to answer that question or you yeah, know that you've crossed a boundary there like you can't ask that yeah yeah, you don't, yeah. And there was nobody there from the actual show that would go, oh no, don't ask, you don't, she's a bit young to be asked that. You just were left on your own to... We weren't left on our own, no. There were people there. Um, it, that got better over time, I would say. At that point, again, I think they knew the context of the magazine. They knew what we were there. We were there to be made to look sexy, to sound sexy, to sell magazines, to sell the show. So for them i think as long as it wasn't explicit they were quite happy for for us to again it's pushing the boundaries isn't it yeah so so talk me through what happened so you left the show and then you came back to it and i know i know from word of mouth that you're very popular with all the crew and everyone oh. at the show um and that they were very excited for you to come back so what what happened there well i went back um, and I went back when my little boy was about 10 months old and I got the phone call from my um, agent saying, Holly Oaks have asked you back. Um, they're really excited about bringing Mandy back. They're really excited about the storyline that's coming up. Um, you're going to be in, you're going to be busy. I was really busy for, for quite a while and you know, working with lots of people that I love, you know, cast and crew and had some great storylines and it was nice, you know, and 
that sort of all flipped really when COVID hit. When we went back filming, obviously then we had social distancing, which I don't know whether you were back on set during that time, but it was horrendous. So suddenly, you know, we literally had a stick that they would hold in between two <laughs> artists to make sure that you were far enough away from each other. Okay. So to go back and try and portray a character and emotions and story, like I had emotional storylines when I went back with the, the young girl that played my daughter, to not be able to get close to that person, to, to do what you instinctively would do yeah. as a human, it made it so difficult to portray a character, to portray emotions. So I went from being really busy, having great storylines, to suddenly just not really being in, not being a relevant character, feeling a bit lost. Again, over lockdown, I had been thinking of other things that I could do that me and my husband were like, what can we do? We need some more security than this. That's sort of where the, the initial thought process came for obviously doing OnlyFans and, and where I'm at now yeah. was this what else could I do? What could I do that I can be in control of that no one can sort of take from me? Yeah. And that's where it stemmed from. Which must have felt really liberating. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's like anything. Until I did it, I didn't know what was going to happen, how, whether it was going to be of interest to anyone, whether it was going to be, a, you know, a flop and just like no one's interested. So, OK, right, we'll move on to the next thing. So the idea of having a platform where the content that I put up is protected and copyrighted and is mine. And if someone does lift it, which does happen, at least I can take some action on it. Right. Sort of a, a no brainer. Um, and so, yeah, I, I put the wheels in motion. I spoke to Hollyoaks about it, um, believe it or not. And it just came to a point where I was like this, I'm going to try it. I'm going to I'm going to launch it and we'll see what happens. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, OK, we can put that to one side. Were you terrified? Yes, obviously. More because I just didn't know how it was going to go. I, didn't, I think I was more terrified of people's reaction to it. Right. Because OnlyFans has this um, preconception. People have a preconception of it and don't know what it is. You don't know what it is. People don't, don't know what it is. You go, is it, is it like the curtain at the peep show? What yeah. is it? <laughs> so. When you do look into the platform, it there's tons of content on there of all different genres. You know, you, of course there there is explicit content on there. That is why it is protected. You've got your wall posts, um, but you can then unlock extra content. So that might be, you know, I might do a photo shoot and put one picture from that photo shoot, and people love it and go, I want to see more from that shoot. And I go, okay, cool, you can. Here's uh, X amount to unlock the rest of that shoot, and. That's so in complete control yeah. of your own destiny. Yeah. How did you find out that you were no longer there and, and how did it feel? So I found, I launched OnlyFans on a Friday and it went really well and I was like, this is amazing, like I should have done this years ago. Um, I got really positive feedback mostly from general public and obviously everyone that knew me. And I then got a phone call, I think, the following Thursday. So the platform had been, I'd been running for about a week. And like I say, I had told the show that I was doing it and they had um, essentially given approval. Um, so this, <laughs> this is why I suddenly went, hang on a minute, what? what's happening? So I got called in for a meeting um, and ended up having a meeting over Zoom and they were like, you have to take it down. It has to come down. And I was like, well, wh why? It's over 18. And I was like, yep. Yeah, I appreciate that the platform is over 18, but my content isn't over 18. So what's different to what, what I was doing before? Like, why is there an issue? You have to take it down. We can't be associated with it. It's like, right, but <laughs> hear me out. It, it, it's, it, this is a good thing. Like we're protecting the youth audience because they can't access this platform. Not again, not that my content is explicit, but they couldn't access it anyway. So why are we, why is this an issue? Anyway, long story short, um, I didn't back down. One, because I have spent so many years of my life being a people pleaser and a yes person. And actually, I went with my gut this time and went, no, I'm no, because this is right for me. This is right for my family. And two, because I knew at that point that 
it was successful and that it was working. And I just thought, even if this only lasts for another couple of weeks, like I am happy that I have made this decision just to stand my ground for me and for every other woman that's sort of been told no in the past. And and the, just the hypocrisy of it all, I think as well, the fact that I had been sexualized and been made an object of sexualization for my entire adult life, to then be told that I couldn't do it on my own terms was really, that's the bit that stung because I just didn't make sense to me. And I was talked to like I was a 17 year old still and I was sat there and I was like, I am a 40 year old woman. This is not happening. So that's sort of how it came about. And then I, I got an, an email basically to tell me that the, my contract was terminated with immediate effect. 0.5% of the people on OnlyFans make any sort of money like 700,000, I think it was. Obviously, it's been reported that you have made money. Do you think they would have sacked you if you'd not? I think the issue for them, and this is me speaking on their part, obviously, um, is that they had no control over it. And that's what terrified them. And if they'd allowed me to do it, what would stop? the rest of the guys and the girls on the show going, oh, well, okay, Sarah's successful on there. I'm gonna give it a go. And then when people realize actually the control you have, the freedom, the biggest thing for me about the platform that has changed my life is the freedom it's given me, the freedom of creativity, the freedom of time. Like I run my schedule, the schedule on the show is horrendous. So to suddenly go, I can do the school run. Yeah, like Stanley's got a school concert. I will be there. Like I 100% going on holiday these days. I don't ask, like these days, I don't have to ask permission. Like that, because I've had to ask permission my entire life has been life changing. So I think if people or the people on the show saw that, they would potentially lose <laughs> their entire cast because people go, why, am, hang on a minute, why am I doing this <laughs> for this much when I can do this and have free, like, creative control freedom and earn this much? It's a no-brainer. So I think my personal view on why it happened the way it did was that they panicked, didn't know what to do, and rather than sort of working with me and, and working something out, they just went, we need to shut this down now. Obviously, you got a lot of support from Hollyoaks fans, but was there like an internal shame or did you feel a shame from Hollyoaks itself or members of the public? Um, I think the way that they, Hollyoaks dealt with it made me feel shamed. So the, I, my contract was terminated on the Wednesday morning and the Wednesday evening, it was suddenly online in the press with no warning to myself. So suddenly I was dealing with the fact that my, I've been sacked from my job and wondering, right, okay, what happens next? Like, this is, this is big and are we okay moving on from here? And then suddenly, you know, without any consideration to me or my feelings or the context, the dialogue again being taken out of my control, it was online that I had been sacked because I'd joined online um, adult site OnlyFans. So the narrative was taken away from me and I think that it probably finalised it for me that I'd made the right decision, that they had so little respect for me that they didn't even give me the heads up that they, tried they to were going to do that. Shame you, yeah, and absolutely. of course people remember the headline; they don't remember the story. Yeah. So, but also, so the narrative that they put out there was it that they just they didn't want you to have control of your own life, or was it that you were a naughty girl? It was that I had overstepped the mark, basically. Yeah, and I, I'd gone against what they'd said and, and that because of that these were the consequences that's how it read and you know and they never spoke about it again so it's not like they ever came back and, and apologized or um, reworded anything it was just left at that and then I had to deal with the sort of unraveling of that and luckily everyone was very supportive but it could have gone another way so yeah that that's where I think the shame came from I had spent years sort of going on set and being put in short skirts and having the camera pan up and all you know almost be up skirt and things like that and then directors sort of manhandling you and feeling uncomfortable to so to to then be told that I couldn't take control of that myself was I think that was the biggest sort of kick in the teeth but one of the negative comments people said was why would you give up such an amazing job I was like well actually how do you know it was an amazing job? Because what you don't know about that is that I wasn't earning very much money at the time. I was very unhappy there at the time. Um, 
And actually, it was a relief to step away from that because I didn't want to stay there forever, but I would have done because I had, you know, it was an acting job that I was in that was sort of consistent. Um, so I think that's what people don't see is if, some, if they decide at any one point that they're done with your character, there's no love loss there for them to go, yeah, we're, we're writing you out, you're, you're gone. Yeah. You know, even there's been people there that have been there forever that f I know felt like that they were in a really secure space and role and they've gone. Yeah. You know, within a couple of months. And then suddenly your whole world's turned upside down, you've got to find other work. And so, yeah, yeah. so to take control of that. Would you, would you mind reading out some of the comments for us? Yeah. Okay. Her family must be embarrassed. Imagine choosing to strip on a dirty website than act in a long-term job. No child wants to hear about their mother's exploits on a pay-per-view porn site. Get a decent job. Desperate, she'll regret it. Blimey, she must be really hard up for money. Those pictures are embarrassing. It's disrespectful to her husband. More fool him if he doesn't mind. <laughs> Classic. Uh, <laughs> cheap and nasty and midlife crisis. How, how does that make you feel? It doesn't surprise me. Do you know what I think is the common denominator amongst all of these comments is a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding, one, of the platform itself, yeah. two, of what my content is. Um, I think people just... Again, because people assume that OnlyFans is just porn and it's just explicit, people instantly go, porn site, she's doing porn. But I'm not. My content isn't explicit. It's, again, the same as what I did previous. Yeah. But I've just moved it from one platform to another. So I think it's a misunderstanding of that. It's a misunderstanding of like I say, my content. It's a misunderstanding of the industry. So again, the thing when people go, oh, why would she give up such an amazing job? Or, you know, she's gonna regret that. But actually, you know, I'm over two years down the line with OnlyFans now and I have zero regrets other than I wish I'd started it sooner. One of the comments that came up the most was, she's a mother. <laughs> I think a lot of this pays into what we've been conditioned to feel about being a woman. And I tick a few boxes now. So one, I'm a woman. Two, I'm a mother. Three, I'm over 40. I cannot be sexy because I'm a mother and I'm over 40. How dare I? How dare I expose my body? How dare I do that and be okay with it? How dare your family accept that? How dare your husband be all right with it? Like, it's what we've been told that we can't do. So the fact that I am standing up and doing it and I am enjoying it and I am successful with it, I think it just annoys people. Well, I've got to say, I've thought about making my husband do it. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, think get the, do you think you'd get the same reaction For though? For sure, do you, but yeah. As in, do you think, like if it was a man, oh, the if it was a man on Holly Oates, obviously he was on Holly Oates, if it was a man on Holly Oates who just suddenly went, I'm going to do only fans, what? No. It's a short answer. I really don't. Yeah. I really don't. And that's the funny thing again about the hypocrisy with the show and that I think somebody sent it to me a few weeks after I'd been fired. Um, there were a couple of the lads on the show completely naked and, and shown on screen from behind. So bare bombs, implied nudity, and that was okay because it's a guy. Yeah. But if that had been one of the girls or, for example, me, yeah. that's not allowed. What I will say is that I'm in a much better position than I ever was, ever was on the, on the show. Even when I was really busy and having like, being used the most there. Any regrets? Zero, apart from not starting sooner. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what, what do you think the future holds? Anything? Oh, I don't know. I've got loads of things that I want to do. Um, you know, lots of people said, oh, why, you've given up acting. I never gave up acting. It was taken out of my, you know, I was, I was rejected from a, an, an acting job. Exactly. Yeah, and other jobs have come up that I've turned down because of, I don't have to do them now. I'm not in a position where I go, okay, I'll do that one episode of that or I'll do that commercial. Financially, I don't have to do that now. So another reason why it's been really freeing is... As an actor, you normally, as you know, you have to just take jobs where they come. They might be really crap, but you take them because <laughs> that money will pay your bills for yeah. the next month. 
And yeah, other than that, I don't know. Who knows how long I'll do OnlyFans for right now. I'm still loving it. It's still working for me. It's still ticking the boxes that I want it to tick. Um, so we'll see. I'll know when it's time to pack it in. Or maybe I'll do it forever. Who knows? Well, you're kind of a businesswoman now, aren't you? As yeah. well as an actor. So that's really good. Do you think your confidence has grown from doing it? A hundred percent. I think my confidence has grown since turning 40. I think people go, oh, you know, we, as women, we get written off from age 30 upwards. But I think 40 is a really pivotal moment. And I think that was part of why this, my world changed for whatever reasons. But I am, so far, I'm loving my 40s. And I really feel like you get to 40 and you just go, I don't care what anyone else thinks anymore. I'm not hurting anyone. I am doing life on my terms now and what's right for me and my family. And that has been life changing. Um, so yeah, I might, who knows, I might do it forever. We'll see.